All right, today we are continuing our series of favorite hero aspects and going through each hero, right? Going all the heroes in the are going through all the heroes in the game, talking about my favorite aspect for each one. And we've done uh, the first two cycles. I'll, I'll put them in the corner up there so you can see them. But we've done the first two already. We're now doing the Guardian cycle, which I realize I haven't played the Guardians heroes in like quite some time. <laughs> um, I need to play more of them more often because it, it's 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 been a while. Now, two really quick important notes before we start. Uh, this is all done through a solo lens, right? So this is not the best aspect for the heroes in multiplayer, just really solo. And this is also my favorite way of playing the hero. Um, not the quote unquote best way. It's just the way I enjoy playing it the most. So uh, an important note uh, about that. And uh, yeah, let's let's dive right into it. We're gonna talk about the very first hero is Groot, which is fun because Groot, Justice, OP, right? That, that's all you need to know. <laughs> Groot in uh, Justice is really, really, really strong. He's a lot of fun. The basic idea of it is that you wanna get his growth counters as high as possible, right? Um, oh, there we go. So right off the bat, you could, place two growth counters on him you can go up to 10 and um that will allow you to play cards like i am groot where you remove threat from a scheme equal to the number of growth counters on groot so if you got him up to 10 you can spend three to remove 10 uh off of a, a side scheme or main scheme or you could play i am groot um which you could deal damage uh to an enemy equal to the number of growth counters on groot so again, that can be a two cost card to deal 10 damage. Now, the way I like to play him basically is to use uh, cards like Think Fast, right? Think Fast allows you to take one damage, uh, so you lose a growth counter, but you can confuse the villain, which will allow you to flip down. When you flip down at the end of your one turn, you can place the two counters here, and then start your next turn, place another two counters. Now, especially if you pair that up with something like Fertile Ground, which each time would get you one extra counter, that entire process can net you five growth counters essentially right after you took the one damage uh from the from uh think fast right so you end up with plus five growth counters and draw a card uh with fertile ground it's a really, really strong way of playing group and that that's the general idea so you constantly want to be flipping him down because you want your counters to be really high for big thwart big attack um and then also like you can you can do things like we are Groot to remove growth counters to put a bunch of tough stats on to help you out you can do things where vine spikes where you remove a growth counter and you swing for two uh two extra damage so you do four instead of two right there's some things you can do with it as well um but that's the, that's the way i like to play Groot. i really enjoy playing him that way and uh it's pretty darn strong and uh, uh really really fun all right, so next up is Rocket. And Rocket's a hero that I haven't played a lot recently because I've always played him aggression. The way he generally works is after you deal excess damage to an enemy, you draw a card. So his card draw can be really good and really interesting. So for me, it's I always wanted to be aggression because I wanted to do as much damage as possible. Now, he has aggressive cards in here that, that can deal damage, right? It can do a decent amount. So I feel like it's one of those things where I need to actually do... Um, some other aspect like a justice or something i think will work well with them maybe a leadership uh but aggression just kind of always made the most sense to me so it's what i played so i i think i, I want to play rocket again soon and i want to try him in justice or something else um because i think it could be pretty interesting in those in those different aspects but aggression is how i've always kind of played him and i haven't played him in a little while so i'll just try that i think i think this is a hero i really want to play again soon so next up is uh peter or star lord and this is another hero where I can only really get him to work as a rush aggression hero. And it's pretty much because of his setup where you uh, search your deck and discard pile for a copy of Elemental Gun and add it to your hand. Now, Elemental Gun is a three cost upgrade, so it's kind of expensive, but you spend or you exhaust Elemental Gun and spend one resource to deal three damage to your enemy, and the attack gains piercing, which is huge, right? Especially for tough enemies right out of the gate. You can, you can plow right through them. That That's not a problem. And a special ability of what could go wrong, you can play a card for free from your hand. You deal yourself one face down encounter card. Um, well, I'm sorry. You would actually reduce the cost to play that card by three. So if it's a four or five cost card, it wouldn't be free. It just reduces it by three. But a lot of his cards are three cost, so it would be like practically free. Sorry, I worded that wrong. But anyway, because of how this works, right, and how everything else with him works, I've always done rush aggression. It's actually the way I beat Expert Ronin is through Star Lord rush aggression uh, strategy. It doesn't always work, but when it does, it's pretty cool and it's pretty sweet and it's a lot of fun. Now I know they 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 had him come out in a leadership uh, build. 
and I've tried leadership with him. I just, I don't know. I can't, I can't get him to work the way I want to. I feel like there is something there with the fact that uh, each ally you control gains the guardian trait. And then using some strong allies and then using a card like Blaze of Glory where each Guardian character gets plus two, plus two. At the end of the phage, you deal one to each one, right? Like, I feel like there's a way that you can really kind of exploit that and make that super strong. Um, I just, I, I haven't gotten there yet with him. I don't know. Every time I do leadership, it doesn't feel quite right, right? It just feels slightly off. So, I don't know. Maybe that's just me. I feel like they want you to play him in leadership, but rush aggression just makes so much sense with him, so... All right, next up is Gamora. Now, Gamora is interesting because you're allowed to include up to six attack and or thwart events in your deck from aspects other than your chosen aspect, right? Which kind of makes her deck building pretty cool in the way she works, and she overall is a pretty balanced hero, I think. Um, recently, the way I've been playing her, <coughs> excuse me, is I will play her as an aggression, uh, with an aggression kit, basically, throw in some justice cards, and I really like like momentum shift, right, for her, because it is an attack event and you can heal two damage from your hero to deal two damage to enemy i think it's a nice way of healing up gamora i think as they come out with more and more healing cards and aggression you might not have to do this maybe you'll pick the other card uh whatever it is that lets you ready up um with it with uh with uh protection um i think that's an attack event i think i don't know you have to double check me on that but anyway, I, I've been experimenting with more and more cards because generally in the past I've always played it where I was either aggression and had some justice cards in there or I was justice and had some aggression cards in there, right? And I think now that protection is kind of becoming a, a more interesting aspect, you can throw some protection cards in there. But that's generally how I play Gamora. She's pretty strong that way. She's just an event-heavy hero, so you're just playing tons of events. Um, but I really do like her as a hero. I think she's I think she's still really fun and, and still really strong. I just felt like I kept playing her over and over and over the same way. So that got, got a little boring. All right, so next up is Drax, which for me, Drax is weird to play because I... F how to phrase this? I feel like protection is the only way that makes sense. Like, he has the best pre-con deck, in my opinion, out of all of them that are out there. But the problem is... It's the way that makes the most sense to play with him. You see, Drax is a 1-1-2 one, one, hero, but he gets plus one attack for each Vengeance counter on him. Well, how do you get Vengeance counters on him? So after the villain attacks Drax, place one Vengeance counter here uh, to a maximum of three. If you cannot, you, you get to draw a card. So he can go up to being a four attack hero, okay? And then you add on, where is it, Drax's knife? He can get up to five attack pretty easily. So cards like Leading Blow, when your hero makes a basic attack, discard the top card of the encounter deck, reduce your hero's attack for for that attack by the number of uh, printed boost icons on that card. If the hero still deals damage, ready your hero, right? This card was like made for Drax, especially with protection, because it's so easy where he's swinging for five already. I don't think there's a five boost card as of right now, maybe four, right? I think there's a few fours. But it would still deal damage, and then you could ready him up and swing again for for six in total. At, at worst, six in total, right? At best, like 10 total, which is, which is kind of nuts. Or you have a card like Subdue, where the enemy still attacks you, but the attack is just really weak, right? It's a minus three. And that's important because Drax wants to be attacked. He just doesn't want to take damage, right? Is the big difference. So he's a hero that I like. I think he's fun to play. The problem is just his pre-con is so good that I don't see another way to really play him. I've done a, a aggression Drax and I've done justice Drax and it just, I don't know, it, it doesn't do the same thing as protection does. Protection is so strong and good with him that I just don't see a reason to play any other aspect but protection. And it, it kind of stinks. I mean, it's good that he has such a strong pre-con, but it kind of stinks the same exact way because, I don't know, it doesn't really make sense. This is a hero I'm curious about what you all think of. How, how do you play Drax? Because I would like to start playing him again some more. Uh, it's, it's been a long time. All right, the last one's Venom. I know people love Venom. They're all like, Venom's so great. He's so much fun. He's so strong. And he's definitely strong. I am so bored of Venom. I really am just not a fan of Venom in general. Um, the reason being is because his guns are just too strong. And it just makes so much sense to play him in Justice. So for those that don't know, he is a 1-2-2 two, two hero. Uh, you can generate a resource by just taking damage. Or take one damage, I should say which is fine, but his pistols basically let you get plus one for any power that's basic power that you use, right? So you can now swing for four damage and then you can use a card like multi-con where you can deal another two damage to an enemy or choose a player and deal one damage to each minion engage with them or just remove two threat from the scheme, right? It's a pretty 
powerful in general. And then if you use justice cards on top of that, you can keep the, the, the amount of damage always down. Or the amount, the amount of uh, threat, I'm sorry, the amount of threat down. He is a strong hero, but to me, he does so much damage with his pistols, right, and his multi-gun that I'm just worried about keeping the threat down. So I just always play him justice. I guess you could play him leadership and kind of do the same exact idea, possibly. But it, again, it's one of those heroes I just haven't played as much because I feel like I was playing him the exact same way every single time, and I was winning a lot, which got boring for me. So he is another hero that I want to play more of, I think. Um, but I just... I just, I just really haven't been able to because I just, I play him justice. So there's a bunch of heroes in this cycle. I feel like once I started playing them a certain way, they just made the most sense that way. And I really haven't kind of deviated from that path and that kind of stinks. Um, so anyway, let me know down in the comments and while you're down there, make sure the like button, hit subscribe, all that fun stuff. But with each of these heroes, let me know how you play them because this is a cycle I want to kind of revisit and play more of and mess around with some of the aspects. I feel like I've done a really poor job with that with this cycle in particular, that I kind of got in these ruts of, oh, no, no, this is how you play that hero. We're just going to play that hero over and over and over. And I want to I wanna change it up a bit. I want to do that more. I think that's that's something I want to do recently. Uh, maybe on Twitch, we'll start streaming more and more champions, or I'm sorry, uh, guardians, uh, heroes, and doing different stuff with them. Maybe. I don't know. That's it. So anyway, I appreciate you taking time to watch this, and I will see you all next time.